Upanishads and Zen, they are not similar or same. The Upanishads is a happening between master and the disciple. When disciple comes to the master out of reverence, with total surrender, then all that happens between the master and the disciple is known as Upanishad. Zen on the other hand is a happening within the disciple himself. The master may help him, he may create devices, show the path, but Zen basically remains an individual experience. The master may give a cone and the disciple works on the cone himself. He ponders, and meditates and meditates. He is working within himself. So the path of Zen basically remains an individual experience. The master creates the device and shows the path. It is not like love. It happens in your aloneness. It is not a relationship. Upanishad, on the other hand, is a great relationship between master and disciple. It cannot happen if master is alone. It cannot happen if the disciple is alone. The master may be full and overflowing, but it cannot happen because the receiving end is absent. It cannot happen if the disciple is alone either, however open and available. But available to what? Open to what? Upanishad is more human phenomena than Zen. It is closer to human reality because it is closer to love. It can be understood more easily because it is very difficult to find a person who has not yet tasted something of love in some moments. There is some experience which can be used to explain to him what happens when a master and a disciple dissolve into one another. So the first thing, the Upanishad is a totally different phenomenon than Zen. And the second thing, the experience is this, but the experience is the same. The paths are different, but finally when you have reached and when you have reached, whether you have followed the path of Zen or Upanishad, they have reached alone to the peak. You have allowed the master to hold your hand in deep trust and reach the peak. It does not matter how you reach the peak. Your vehicle can be different, just as many people going to the hilltop in their own vehicles of different makes but the destination of each one of them is the hilltop, the peak and the vehicle is the way to transport them to that hilltop. So too Zen and Upanishads are like the vehicle that take you to the destination, the peak of your consciousness. Your vehicles can be different. Your means can be different, but the peak is the same, you are the same. The experience of finding oneself and simultaneously finding the whole secret of existence remains the same. So on one hand I say they are totally different. On the other hand I say they are exactly the same and there is no contradiction in these two statements. The paths are different, but the ultimate finding remains the same. Understand this through the example. There is a function going on at the hilltop. You are at the foot of the hill. The hill is nearly 500 feet high. You have to take the transport to reach there. You can go in your own vehicle, but the vehicle that diff all the people who are going to participate may have of a different make, different color, different brand and different number plates. So two, Zen and Upanishads are different vehicles, vehicles of different makes. 
that take you to the same destination, same hilltop. Zen is an arduous path, a hard and long way, but it is up to you. There are people who love to go the hard way. The simple way does not appeal to them. The hard way is exciting. Upanishad is not a hard way. It is a very simple and relaxed experience. It is the shortest way possible to the ultimate reality because you are in communion with someone who is already overflowing and you are open. But there are different kinds of people in the world. They all need different paths to reach to their fulfillment. These are two extremes. In this sense, Zen and Upanishads are as far away from each other as two points can be. And yet the final conclusion is always same. One is hard way, long way, but a few people need it too. I have heard once a mystic in Sri Lanka was dying. He declared that the next morning he would be dying. He had thousands of followers. They all gathered. He was old, almost 90 years. And he had been teaching these people for 60 years. And the Buddhist teaching is a very hard way. But the mystic at the point of his death said, I have been teaching you the way I have followed, the way that has helped me to attain to the ultimate. But I know that there is a shortcut in reaching to the ultimate too. So short that if somebody wants to go in with me, stand up, I am leaving. People looked at each other, at those about whom they thought, these are very religious people and perhaps they may stand up. As far as I am concerned, there are so many problems. Nobody stood up. Only one man raised his hand. The old man said, even that is a great consolation to me. But why are you not standing up? The man said, because I do not want to go now, but I want to know there is the shortcut as well. In case at some time I want to go, I may use it. Why bother with the heart and the long way? That is why I just raise my hand. I cannot stand up. As far as that hard way is concerned, we know. Because for 60 years you have been teaching it. And at the last moment you are telling about the shortcut. You are a strange fellow. At least tell us where the short way is. The mystic said, the short way has a condition. It is for those who are ready to go right now. I give another chance to stand up. Even that man's hand went down and there was utter silence. And everybody was looking at each other. The old man died. People want the way to be hard and to be long because it is good excuse for avoiding and life is so short and full of so many problems and many responsibilities so much has to be done the children are growing up they have to be educated married the business is not good or the business is so good that there is not a moment to meditate. Upanishads is the shortest way possible. Neither has the disciple to do anything, nor has the master to do anything. Doing is not part of it. I have quoted the Zen poet Basho many times to you. Sitting silently, doing nothing, the spring comes and the grass grows by itself. As far as Upanishadic methodology is concerned, even doing nothing is not needed. And what are you going to do even if the grass grows by itself? Whether you sit silently or not, it will grow. Whether you sit silently or not, the spring will come. 
you are unnecessarily taking the credit for the grass growing by itself. Because you have been sitting silently doing nothing, even when you were not, the grass used to grow. When you will not be here, the grass will continue to grow. It has nothing to do with you. The Upanishad does not even ask you to sit silently doing nothing. Even doing nothing is a doing. The entire approach of the Upanishad is so totally different. The disciple is available, the master is overflowing, and something transpires between the two. Nobody is doing it. Nobody can take the credit for it. That is why I say the way of Upanishads is the most mysterious way in the whole human consciousness and its evolution. That is why I say the way of Upanishad is the most mysterious way in the whole human consciousness and its evolution. Zen is mysterious in another way. Still it can be understood. Upanishad is simply mysterious and there is no way of understanding it. You can have it, you can dissolve into it, but there is no question of explanation. Only experience is there. All over the world there have been mystery schools in Greece. Pythagoras founded mystery schools in the religion of the Jews. Baal Shem founded a mystery school. In China, there were mystery schools of Tao, and when Buddhism reached China, a new chain of new mystery schools opened, Chan. The same mystery schools Chan reached Japan as Zen. But the word Zen and Chan are the Buddhist word Zan are all different forms of Sanskrit word Dhyan. In India, Dhyan has been known for centuries even before Gautam. Buddha ever meditated. That mystery school was there. There was mystery schools of Tantra. There were mystery schools of different types of Yoga. I have gone through all these schools, not as a scholar, but as a participant for experience. In my own authority, I can say to you, nothing rises higher than the mystery school of Upanishads because it is the shortest. Nobody is expected to do anything and yet the miracle of it happens. Yet the miracle of Upanishad happens. Communion between the master and the disciple.